This is my dual drive Towny, uh, dual drive Magic Pie 3 bike. It's quite powerful. I've ridden it for some time now. I absolutely love this bike. Step one, of course, was to wash it. I have the batteries taken off the back to make it nice and light to work on. And I'm going to be putting a Cycle Analyst 3 on it and a thun sensor to turn it into a pedelec powered bike. So when you pedal it, it'll make it go. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find the wire that comes from the throttle that's headed into the wire harness. And uh, it's quite easy to find. Here I've split it open very carefully and you can see the five wires inside. The green wire is the one we want. So the next step is to head inside to my desk and wire up the new wires coming in and out of the cycle analyst. This is an information sheet I made to show how to hook up the Magic Pi 3 to the new Cycle Analyst 3. And the first thing you would do to start out is the shunt. The shunt needs to be hooked up in between the battery and the controller on the motor. And you can see on the shunt, at one end it says battery, and the red and black wire from that end of the shunt, you run back into your battery. And then at the other end of the shunt, you can see it says controller. And that red and black wire would run back to the motor, right to the red and black wires going into the power for the motor. And that's the basic hookup for the shunt. So basically it just goes between the battery and the motor. Now also at this end of the shunt here you can see a six pin plug. This plug will be plugged into a wire that goes up to the cycle analyst on the handlebars. And then at the other end of the shunt you can see three output wires. The really the only one we're concerned about here is the green and the green one will be going back to the controller for the motor but we'll describe that later. So that's how you hook up the shunt. Now the next step is how you would hook up the other end up at the top. If you look at the back of the cycle analyst you can see a three pin plug coming up and it's for your throttle input. You can see there's a green, a black and a red wire that go in it. You'll be able to see the wires back here. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to run the throttle signal that's coming out of the out of the throttle down this green wire into the throttle in for the cycle analyst and then the throttle signal will come back out of the shunt and run right back into this wire and continue on its way through the wire harness to the controller on the Magic Pi 3. So basically all you're doing is you're running the throttle output wire through the cycle analyst and back into the inline towards the controller. So this way it'll allow the cycle analyst to control the speed of the bike. You'll be able to use all the features of the cycle analyst. Now that's the basic hookup. And when you do it that way, you do not have to open the cycle analyst. It's a very simple way of doing it. Um, another way of doing it, if you wanted, was you could open up the cycle analyst itself. And where the green wire would be headed out of the back of the cycle analyst and down to the shunt, you just splice into it right there and then you run it back into the wire going back to the so back to the controller so here you'd have the wire coming out of the throttle through the cycle analyst and down to the controller so it'd be a little neater setup you don't have to run the wire all the way back from the shunt but either way will work this way would require opening the cycle analyst to do this though and a third way of hooking this up would be when you take the green wire and you go to run it into the throttle cable instead of doing that just run it into the back of the cycle analyst and attach it right onto this green wire right here and then it'll run back out all the way back into your wire harness into the bike this way the throttle signal will still go through the cycle analyst and back but it'll be nice neat wiring going in and out of the back of the cycle analyst again you don't have to open the cycle analyst to do it you could use the first method which I showed you up here but this is probably the way I'm going to do it. This is just a tip to ensure that you're cutting into the correct wires if you're going to wire this from the inside. You can see that this cable here is the one that plugs into the shunt. I just tested it to make sure it's the right one. And it runs into the cycle analyst. And what you do is you just push it through. And then you can see it pop out the inside. So here it is on the inside now. And then you can tell that these are the wires that come from the shunt. Here's the yellow one that doesn't do anything. 
and there's the green one, which is the one we're going to attach to. Now the same thing for the throttle. <clears throat> the throttle is the black three pin one, which is here. Okay, and according to the diagrams, there's the red, the green, and the ground in there. It looks like a red and a green anyway. So that's on this bundle. So again, I just pushed it through. You can see it's coming out the inside there, which is kind of difficult to see, but it's the one underneath here. And on here you can see the red and the green. So the green on this one is the one I want to go to. So the green on this one, which is coming from my throttle, and the green on this one, which goes to the, the controller. So these are the two I'll be cutting into. I'm just going to skin them off, you know, peel the uh, casing back a bit and solder wires onto them. I'm not going to cut them. It seems that the cable for the Speedo is the thinnest cable going into the back of the cycle analyst. So I did manage to squeeze two wires in beside it. I pushed the Speedo cable through first to give it a little more space. And now that I've got it inside, I'm just going to pull the Speedo cable back to see if I can seat it back in the hole again nicely and hopefully this will be a good enough water seal. Okay, there was some extra shrink wrap on the Speedo cable to make it fit tighter in the hole, so I peeled all that off. Not sure if it's a good idea, but this should allow me to get the wires, get it back in seated properly with the wires beside it. Here you can see the green and yellow wires coming out of the back of the CA. I have them running inside, and here I have attached them onto the two green wires that I was pointing out earlier. The green wire from my throttle will be going to the throttle in on the, con on the control board. And the green wire that would be headed back to the shunt, I've spliced into and it's going to be going back on the yellow wire out to my wiring harness and then from there it will work its way down into the controller. So I've soldered them on, I've taped them. It's a little brutal, it's not too pretty, but uh, it'll work fine. And now I have the two wires coming out the back of the cycle analyst. Okay, I've got the green and yellow wire coming out the back of the cycle analyst now beside the speedo cable. And I've got the cycle analyst back together again. So where I attach these wires inside, please keep in mind that you don't have to do it this way. You don't have to open the cycle analyst. The green wire I attach to where it goes to the throttle on the board. You could have easily just stuck the green wire into the three prong plug, which is this one. You could have easily just attached it to here, shown in the wiring diagram that I have. I believe it would have been into the bottom prong here, but you'll have to confirm that with the wiring diagram. The yellow wire I attached is where it would be going out to the shunt. So on the shunt itself, I could have just attached the yellow wire onto this green one that's coming out of the shunt here. That's the throttle out, which would be going to the controller. So I didn't have to open the cycle analyst, but I did. I want to just keep everything nice and close on the handlebars. So now the yellow will be attached to, where, to the throttle wire where it's going into the wire harness. And the green will be attached onto the throttle wire where it's headed towards the throttle. So the throttle will now run into the cycle analyst and back out. Okay, it's time to go put it on the bike. Okay, so now I've mounted the cycle analyst on the bike. You can see the green and yellow wires coming up. And I mounted them onto the green wire that I cut coming from the throttle. So the green wire goes up to the throttle, and the yellow wire is going down to the controller. Okay, now you can see I've taped up the wire. Of course, before I did that, I soldered the ends nicely and neat. I put some black electrical tape on it. But before I put the tape on it, I put black electrical liquid tape on it to seal it up from any water. And then it's all wrapped up nice and tight. And then I mounted the speedometer sensor and the speedometer magnet on the wheel. 
Now we're moving on to the thun sensor. So I flipped the bike over. I've got a couple of alloy keys. I'm taking the covers off the pe pedal arms. Uh, I believe it was eight millimeter Allen keys to pull these out. Not quite sure. Then you use a pedal removal tool. It's quite a simple object to use. It's about $15 at any bike shop. You will never get the pedal arms off without this tool. Definitely recommend getting one. And once you get the pedal arms off, you can see there's one off there. The sprocket is coming off the other side. And uh, now we use the spindle removal tool. Probably about another $15 tool from a bike shop. And this allows you to take the spindle out. You can see the teeth in the side of the spindle. They match perfectly. It's a very simple tool to use. It's recommended you take the cap end off, which is the opposite side of the chain. Take that end off first. I'm quite surprised to see how much rust is in there when I took this apart. I think it's a fault of the bike because the bike allows water in through holes near the top where wiring goes in. And uh, we'll take a look inside there. Now that I've taken this out, I can see there's quite a bit of fluid inside. It's pretty wet in there from water. I would assume that this is because this bike has holes in the frame for the wires to go in. So definitely to put something electronic down there, this is going to need a drain hole, which is good because we need to put a wire there anyway, so the hole will definitely go in the bottom. Now with the spindle in, I can wiggle it around. I can see there's some room in there for the wire to slide in, so this should hopefully work. Next thing is to drill a hole. So before I drill the hole, I decided to look at the spindle and measure it. It's quite a bit longer than the one I'm going to put in. It's an odd picture, but it's about 130 millimeter. So maybe a 136 would have worked better on this bike. And the one I'm putting in is a 119, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm looking at the bottom of the bike, and this is where I'm going to drill a hole for the water to come out and for the wire to come out. And uh, I drilled it through there. It was quite easy to do. I measured my bit to make sure it was big enough to allow the plugs to go through. And I notice the plugs are kind of catching on the hole a bit. You can see I've pushed the wire into kind of like a little channel on the side of the thun so it doesn't get caught and I've pulled the wire through but I notice the wire is getting caught a bit so I've drilled the hole again at an angle so the wire comes through a little easier. And I've cleaned the hole up with a little file to make it get rid of all the burrs. So the key here is to put the small cap on first and put the whole thun sensor in afterwards. Otherwise, if you put the thun sensor in first and you try to put the cap on the other side, it seems to get caught up. But anyway, it's in and the wires are there. I put some heat shrink over them and I created a drip loop on the wires. And now we're on to the next step. So after making that statement on to the next step, I realized the next step is just simply cleaning up the wiring and zip tying everything nicely to the frame and then configuring the cycle analyst, going through the setup perimeters. Check the description below the video and you should find some links to the diagrams I drew as well as the setup perimeters for the cycle analyst. To summarize, setting up the cycle analyst 3 torque kit was a very simple process. It only took a few hours and I really took my time with it. I've been riding the bike now and I really enjoy it. You pedal, the bike goes, you stop pedaling at coast, it's really a great thing. Gary Salo, Gold Motor Canada.